So our next speaker is Joy Lee from the Van Hooven Lab at San Jose University, and she'll tell us how sensory activity maintains proper neural connectivity in the worm. I'd like to thank you for being here and thank the organizers for this opportunity. Thanks for the introduction. But my name is Joy Lee. I'm a master's student in Miri Van Hoven's laboratory at San Jose State University. Today I'm going to tell you about our work to develop the C. elegans Phasmus circuit as a model for studying the effects of sensory activity on neural connectivity. Sensory activity has long been known to affect neural connectivity. For example, in the visual system, the primary visual, the primary visual cortex receives equal but unorganized um, inputs from each eye at birth. These inputs are then organized into left and right eye specific uh, ocular dominance columns. If one eye is deprived of sensory activity early in development, the size of the deprived eye columns is dramatically decreased. Similarly, other types of sensory activity have been shown to affect neural connectivity during these early critical stages. We're interested in using C. elegans to study how sensory activity affects uh, synapses. C. elegans is ideal for these studies as it has a simple nervous system. Synapses are um, conserved at the morph morphological and molecular levels and the synaptic connectivity of the organism is known. Also, its transparency and cell-specific promoters allow us to visualize and study individual neurons and synapses. Specifically, we're interested in, in studying the phasma circuit in the posterior of the animal. The PHB chemosensory neurons extend dendrites to the phasma opening, and they extend axons anteriorly into the preanal ganglion, where they form the ma majority of their synapses with AVA and PVC interneurons. Here we focus on connections made between the PHB and AVA neurons. This is a diagram of the PHB sensory circuit with ASH included because we use a nose touch in our behavior assay. Massimo Hilliard and colleagues discovered that the FASMIS, circuit sen uh, the FASMIS sensory circuit senses low concentrations of sodium dodecyl sulfate, and we adapted his original assay for testing SDS response. We use a nose touch to initiate backward movement. We then place a drop of dilute SDS behind the animal on a dry plate so that the liquid is absorbed and does not wick along the animal. We record the amount of time that the animal backs into the dry drop before stopping. We compare wild type and mutant, animal, uh, mutant responses to SDS using a relative response index. Massimo discovered that the tax for cyclic nucleotide gated channel subunit is required for sensing SDS. Here we use tax for mutant data from our assay to illustrate how we calculate the response index. We test at least 40 mutants in SDS and at least 40 in the control buffer and we compare the ratio of those averages uh, with that of wild type animals assayed on the same day. Wild type is normalized to 100% and a defect in sensing SDS results in a significant increase in the relative response index. A complete defect in sensing SDS typically results in a relative response index of around 300%. For the rest of my talk, I'll tell you about our current research using the FASMIT circuit as a model. We collaborated with the Latoile lab at UCSF using their WINC-G2 marker to demonstrate that CGMP levels increase in PHB neurons uh, in response to SDS. We then used the PHB circuit specific behavior assay to identify additional molecules required for sensing SDS, including the odor 3 g alpha. We also deprived PHB neurons of sensory signaling using odor 3 loss of function mutants and found defects in synaptic maintenance. Finally, we tested which components of the NGM plates are being sensed by the FASMIS circuit, and we discovered that sensing sulfate likely maintains synaptic structure. 
and I'll discuss future directions as well. The discovery that TAX4 is required for sensing SDS suggests that the sensory signal is mediated by CGMP. To test this, we collaborated with Noelle Atoile at UCSF, her postdoc Chantal Brugman, and her PhD student Sarah Wildemariam, as well as our own Mar Martina Bremer, a biostatistician in the ma math department of San Jose State University, with whom we collaborate um, on all our projects. The Wink G2 biosensor is adapted from the mammalian Flink G CGMP sensor. The nucleotide binding domains of the CGMP dependent protein kinase G are linked to a circularly permuted EGFP such that CGMP binding results in an increase in green fluorescence. First, we wanted to know if the marker perturbs PHB circuit function but animals expressing the WINC-G2 marker in the PHB neurons responded normally to uh, SDS. And we were very excited to see that on average, there was a significant increase in WINC-G2 fluorescence in response to SDS. And the magnitude of the, of the increase is in the range that the Latois lab has seen in other neurons as well. So the WINC-G2 and TAX4 experiments suggest that SDS is sensed via a GPCR pathway. To identify additional molecules required for SDS sensation, we te we're testing a panel of mutants, including GPCR, uh, G-alpha, the guanylyl cyclase, as well as cyclic nucleotide-gated channel mutants. So far, we've identified odor three as the G-alpha, and TAX2 as another cyclic nucleotide gated channel subunit required for SDS sensation. The, res the relative response indices for these mutants are significantly increased, indicating a defect in the ability to sense SDS. To understand the effects of sensory signaling on synaptic structures, we use neuroligand GFP reconstitution across synaptic partners, or neuroligand GRASP, to specifically label PHB to AVA synapses in live animals. Neuroligand is a transmembrane molecule localized to pre and post synaptic sites in C. elegans. My PI, Mary, link, uh, linked neuroligand to split GFP fragments and expressed them in PHB and AVA neurons during her postdoc in Kang Shen's lab at Stanford in collaboration with the Corey Barkman lab at Rockefeller. Although I haven't shown it here, we have previously published that neuroligand grasp does not affect PHB circuit function. When synapses form, the split GFP fragments reconstitute and fluoresce. In Mutant animals with fewer synapses, fluorescence is reduced. So to understand uh, how sensory signaling affects, um, uh, so, so to understand um, the effects on synapses when PHB neurons are deprived of sensory signaling, we visualize synapses of odor 3 loss of function mutants. Interestingly, we found a severe reduction in PHB to AVA synapses in L4 animals. When we did a time course, we found that in L1s, synapses appear normal. Only in L2 and later stages is there a defect. This suggests that sensory activity plays an important role in maintaining sensory synapses. We then found that expressing order 3 in PHB neurons can rescue both SDS sensation and PHB to AVA synapses, indicating the odor 3 likely functions in PHB neurons. Our subcellular localization experiment shows that odor 3 localizes to the cilia as well as the cell body where it's produced. This is consistent with the role in sensory signaling. Of course, nematode growth media does not contain SDS, so we tested components of the media to determine if the PHB circuit might weakly sense one. 
And we found that it senses magnesium sulfate to see if it's the magnesium or the sulfate that's being sensed. We tested magnesium chloride and sodium sulfate separately, and the worms responded to sodium sulfate. So we're at, we're, we want to know if we added sulfate, would it affect synaptic structure? Indeed, our preliminary results show that when we uh, spread additional sulfate on media, grasp intensity increases significantly, consistent with a role in synaptic maintenance. So putting it all together, here's what we've learned so far. The Wink G2 marker demonstrates that CGMP increases in PHB neurons in response to SDS. The odor 3 G alpha and the tax 2, tax 4 cyclic nucleotide gated channel sen uh, regulate sensation of SDS. And sensory activity in PHB neurons is likely required to maintain synapses. And sensation of sulfate likely maintains synaptic structure. And going forward, we continue to take a genetic approach to learn the mechanism by which sensory activity modulates synaptic connectivity. We're particularly interested in linking this sensory signaling pathway to molecules acting at the synapse. This has been a great team effort. I'd like to thank all the team members, not all of whose work is presented here today. Uh, I particularly want to thank Rocky, Jackie, Katie, and Alan, as well as Van Hoven Lab alumni, Jury, Ben, the Christines, Chris, Aruna, Brian, and Alex. And of course, none of this would be possible without the generous mentoring of our PI, Mary. And we'd like to thank our collaborators again, Noel, Chantal, Sarah, and Martina, as well as NIH for our funding. Thank you, I'll take questions. There are no questions, I will ask one. So how do you think it's uh, working at the molecular level in, at the synapse? How do you think it's uh, being consolidated? Uh, we think, um, we think neuro, um, neural ligand is being recruited to the synaptic site and thus serving a maintenance role. And Hi, um, could you go back a couple of slides where you showed the uh, GFP synapses where they're lacking, where you don't have the, um, the, the gene, I think. Keep going. Right there. Did you test when you have wild type, but you don't expose the worms to SDS? They have the gene, but they aren't exposed to SDS. Do they still have those synapses or not? Yeah. Uh, in fact, what I'm not showing here, we, we, I have a consult. This is a consolidated graph. Uh, so in each stage, L1, L2, and so on, we tested uh, 40 wild type and 40 mutants. They all have uh, neural like graphs for us to visualize the synapse. Okay, so even when the wild type aren't exposed to SCS, they look like wild type that are exposed to SCS? Do you see what I'm getting at? Oh, th these are not exposed. They're not exposed. These are just uh, odor 3 loss of function mutants. Okay, I'm sorry I missed that then. Yeah. These are not, 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 uh, well, I, they also were tested in the behavior assay when they're exposed to SDS, but these, this is a separate assay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. No further questions, so thank you. Thank you.